All right, this is a Fox News alert. Michael Cohn's recording of his former client, Donald Trump, has now been made public. This was obtained by CNN and given to them by Cohn's attorney, longtime friend of this program, Lanny Davis. Fox News has not verified the tape. Here's a clip. Take a listen. It's muffled. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and, I've spoken, to and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes. Um, and it's all the yeah, stuff, all the stuff, because, you know, you never know where that company, you no, never know where he's going to be. Gets it, but Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So I'll pay the no, 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 no. I got... Here with reaction, Fox News investigative reporter, contributor Sarah Carter, former Clinton pollster, advisor Mark Penn. Look at that. This book out today, number one book in the country on Amazon.com. Right now, the Russian hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton, frame Donald Trump. Uh, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. By the way, right after this show, Greg is going to be hosting a live online book signing. He can obviously uh, write it out to you. And by the way, order a copy, submit a question. My website, Hannity.com. Congratulations, number one in the country. Thank you very uh, much. You deserve it very much. And the president just tweeted out about it, by the way. Uh, did. Let, let's start with the tape. Yeah. Um, I, and I've known Michael, I've been friends with Michael for a long time. And I'm a little surprised at a recording of a client. That surprises me. But with that said, as I look, listen to all of this, I'm listening to something that never happened. Right. That it was a billionaire, and they're just saying, "Oh, I don't want the divorce to come, the records to come out," because divorces are always usually ugly, right? Yeah. And then they talk about, well, pay cash or check. It's muffled. Right. Well, I don't see anything here. There's I see nothing, a dud. There's nothing illegal uh, about uh, paying somebody. Uh, who wants money in exchange for remaining silent? I used to negotiate contracts all the time. Aren't they to, called non disclosure? To, yes, to make people go away and be quiet. There's whether nothing illegal people, about it. People it's not do those crime. deals whether things really happen. Sure. Or not. And look, he's a billionaire. There's a fine line between somebody exercising their free speech to talk about you and extortion to remain quiet. Um, Is it often it, cheaper for people to, it's to the pay cost than to of doing business? I used to tell clients this all the time. Um, it's sort of a nuisance value settlement for a billionaire to pay $150,000. He never anything? paid a nickel. That's the important part to remember here. And whether there's a discussion about paying cash or check, none of it ever happened. So no it doesn't crime matter ever that the whatever the uh, the, the national the American media corporate. Yes. Does it matter that they bought a story and didn't use it? No, they, it's up to them. They bought the rights to it. For all we know, you They're know, say, well, it's a campaign contribution. Donald Trump could have bought the rights from them. I mean, these things are negotiated among parties no all the time. No legal issues at all. None whatsoever. It is not a crime. This is all just a, a red herring to smear the president about personal matters that have nothing to do with no. uh, the Trump-Russia collusion hoax. Let me, let me go to Sarah. Sarah, uh, I listened to it closely. It sounds like a conversation between a lawyer and a client about just, you well, know, how do you deal with stuff that comes up in a campaign and not have big problems, but nothing happened. <laughs> That's right. It's not very clear. But one of the things that I think was interesting was the way he was saying, uh, Mr. Cohen was saying, no, 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 no. It wasn't like he was saying, no, we can't do that. I mean, if that's the assumption, he was saying, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to do it that way. That's the way it came across to me. Now, we don't know unless we talk to Mr. Cohen not do it and what uh, way? President not Trump. Not do it that way. What does that mean? Is that talking about cash or a check? Yeah. Yeah. So he was saying, oh, no, 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 not cash. That's the way it sounded to me. Yeah. Uh, but we have to talk. I mean, obviously, Mr. Cohen has to speak. Um, Lanny Davis did come out and talk to CNN, and he said he wanted to have this side of the story. But I'm, I'm kind of stunned like you are, Sean. The fact that the attorney would be recording this, and apparently without his client's knowledge, and then using this later, and also shows how far they're willing to go to squeeze people to try to get something out of them. And this is a real smear campaign. Of course, this was a decision that Donald Trump made 10 years ago. This is mm -hmm. something that's coming out. I'm sure it's publicly embarrassing for him. Him and his family, and it's probably very difficult. But In other this words, like when they're to talking be... about, well, we are, we have a right to fight, not to release uh, the details of a divorce. If That's you're right. the president, I don't think anybody wants that out. 
That's right. Nobody wants that out. And it appears, though, what's happening here is they're doing everything in their power to pressure Michael Cohen to get everything they can kind from him. Kind of like to squeezing spear. Manafort, putting the screws to him so that he'll sing or compose, so that That's he'll right. then... You know, uh, eventually the information could be used to prosecute or impeach Trump. Sounds like Jim Ellis right. the third. All right, let me go to Mark Penn. I, Mark, I, breaking news, obviously. We had to talk about a different issue, but you're a longtime Clinton pollster. You're one of the few Democrats, like our Alan Dershowitz, that has looked at what has happened here as it relates to FISA warrants, lies paid for, unverified, to get warrants to spy on opposition party candidates and literally, even though it's unverified, fed to FISA judges like it's gospel truth and how dangerous this is for this country. Well, I, I completely agree. I, I think it is an incredible violation of American civil liberties that the dossier was seen as credible evidence to use a secret court which is really for ferreting out terrorists to spy on Americans in American political campaigns. You, and the only thing worse than that now is devolving back to 1998 and now spending a year investigating payments to people whether or not they had affairs or not. This is bringing this country down. Do you really? I honestly have never seen it this bad. I mean, if Donald Trump cured cancer, and gave every American $10 million, I am convinced the media would still hate him. Even if he adopted their full agenda, they would hate him. There's nothing, it's like if Donald Trump tweets a single word they don't like, <gasps> they're like hyperventilating all over the media. Well, it's rather remarkable. When you look at the NBC poll, that basically NBC says, well, they disagree with everything he's doing. And his job rating goes up. His personal favor goes by up. The way, he's at his Intensity of support numbers. goes up. You're right. It, it's, it's incredible. So something else is going on in the country. And you're a pollster. The polls really have to cap. I'm a pollster. And something else is going on in the country. There are several narratives going on at once. And too often, only one side of that narrative is being there's a very strong economy. People want a country that stands up. Do you yes, see a blue like wave? The or do you yes, see there's a lot of stuff no they don't like. Do you see a blue uh, wave? There's in a blue your poll? edge. Look, there's a blue edge. Anybody in, in anybody be. after two years, uh, you know, usually Congress turns over. There's still a blue edge. But remember, Trump is actually stronger than people think. The economy is stronger than people think. I think this misjudging, this hysteria, this going to socialists is, in fact, hurting the Democrats' chance to win. No, 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 they're doing win. the right thing. They should stay exactly on the path they're on. I, know you're totally uh, I knew you would on say that. that. All right. So where does this tape go? I know it'll be, uh, uh, you know, the next hyperventilating moment of the media, but I, if there's no there there, what's the point? Well, there is no point to it. It's irrelevant. Do you think they're trying to pressure Michael Cohn that much, that they're trying to, because I didn't to like To me, it's a wait, sign wait, of I'll desperation. Honest, I think what they did to him and his office, there's something that does not seem right in any of it. Oh, I agree. These are rather thuggish tactics, but it doesn't surprise me now coming from the federal government and the FBI and Robert Mueller. They're all using pretty much the same tactics. Your door's next after this book. You know? Yeah, or your You're door. Done. And well, well, probably, thanks. Why my door? Why don't they go to Sarah's house? Sarah's they've been, available. They've been listening Please. to all your conversations. They have <laughs> yeah, all your exactly. text messages. In your, I mean, actually, I, I told my wife, I, I operate on the assumption that I'm being monitored. And this is the United States. Yes. And it's That's tragic to assumption. say, but we sh we are now in a position right. of being afraid of our own government. Sarah? Mm -hmm. I have to agree with Greg on this, and I have to agree with you, Sean. I mean, they're pressuring Paul. They look what they did to Paul Manafort. Look what they did to George Papadopoulos. Look what they did to General Flynn. This is another strong-arm tactic, and that's what they're trying to do, and they're desperate. Yeah, uh, I got to tell you, it's really unbelievable to me. Hang on, is this breaking news? Anyway, uh, by the way, Rudy says the transcript that we provided CNN accurately reflects the conversation. So they're high. They don't care, yeah, and they shouldn't legally. It's All not right. a crime. In 13 minutes from now, Hannity.com, Greg will sign his the number one book in the country. He'll sign it to you. If you have any questions, Hannity.com, he'll be answering. Congratulations. We're proud of you. Thank you. This Greg. is a great book. Thank well you. done. And you did it all yourself. I did. Uh, Dr. Gorka and Dan Bongino. And by the way, we have a big, 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 big announcement. It'll, it'll surprise you. I promise that. Next.
All right, Michael Cohen has just released a one secretly recorded conversation between he and Donald Trump to CNN. Fox News has not independently verified the tape. Fox News uh, joining us now is national security strategist Dr. Gorka, former Secret Service agent, NRA TV contributor Dan Bongino. Um, I have known Michael a long time. I like Michael. He has a lovely family. I honestly think what they've done to him is wrong. I was not a client of his, uh, although I did ask him a, a legal question on, we, we used to talk privately, and I, so, but we didn't have a business relationship, and just to be totally transparent. Um, I think what they did to him is wrong. I read this tape and I don't see any there there. It seems like a dud, and I don't know what these other 11 tapes are about. What are your, what's your reaction, Dan? You know, Sean, I, I don't know Michael Cohen. I've never met him, but I'm sorry. This is just straight up sleazy. You know, one thing I know from people who've worked for Donald Trump, and I know a lot of them, um, is they'll tell you this. He's fiercely loyal to his people. He doesn't pretend to be a saint, but he's ferociously loyal to his people. It's really ridiculous that this guy was giving him legal advice and is then recording him and then releasing the tapes. And one more thing, Sean, he better be damn sure Donald Trump was in New York for all those calls where it's a one-party consent state. Because if Trump was in Florida at Mar-a-Lago, he's on one of those 12 calls, Florida is a two-party consent, consent state. Does that matter and Cohen if it's, may have if committed it's a crime from a one-party consent state, though? It, it matters to who you record. Yes, if Donald Trump was in Florida and Cohen you know, was in New York, let me, let me you just, can't let, record let me him without just his consent. Say this. I'm assuming, and I don't know why he recorded him, um, but I'm assuming that Michael Cohen never thought his office was going to get raided either, and he wasn't going to release this on his own, Dr. Gorka. You know. Yeah, I, I can't talk for Michael Cohen. I've never met him either. Uh, let's talk about the broader reality here. CNN still doesn't get it. Donald Trump is the president, and CNN has lost the plot. Instead of actually being a news organization, uh, and they could report on the fact that, according to a Wall Street Journal NBC poll, Donald Trump has the highest approval rating in his 18th month than any president since Dr. polling Gorka, began. You know, except they upped their estimate for GDP growth of the second yes, quarter to five. I know. 5. I was, that was that was my next point. Wow. That was my next point, Sean. Mm -hmm. so, so instead of talking about GDP predict, pred, uh, predictions that affect all Americans, instead of talking about the president's historic popularity, with one exception, George Bush after 9-11, they're talking about this tape that says nothing. I mean, what is it going to be next, Sean? Is it going to be a, a secret video of Baron Trump's first birthday party and he's eating cake? Oh, they are geez. making a mockery <laughs> of themselves. But it, as I said, I think if he cured cancer, Dan, they'd still hate him. You know, Sean, wait till the GDP numbers come out on Friday. If we hit 5%, if we have 4%, a figure we never listen, hit. Listen, lower expectations. If we, <laughs> four, the, the previous president in eight years is the only president never to have 3% GDP grow in a year, GDP grow. He's um, never had an annual. That's that. You're absolutely right. And he, he, you are absolutely correct. He's the only president in modern U.S. history to not do that. Not one annual year, 3% yeah, GDP Now we have more GDP jobs growth. available than people on unemployment. Two million fewer people on food stamps. Yeah, America's back. Um, all right. Thank you both. Big announcement next. All right. We have a huge announcement on Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Roseanne Barr will speak out and join us for an exclusive interview. You don't want to miss that Thursday night, 9 p.m. All right. In 15 seconds, <laughs> if you go to Hannity.com, you can see our friend Greg Jarrett. It's the number one book in the country.